Half a thousand islands and the time-worn mountains of Greece, the stage for 3,000 years of history. Today, Greece is one of the four Atlantic community nations which stand along the Mediterranean's northern shore. On land, frontiers with four countries, two of them good friends and allies, Yugoslavia to the north and Turkey to the east, both bound to Greece and the Balkan Pact. But Albania and Bulgaria have been openly hostile to the Greek people. From across their frontiers in 1945 came attacking bands determined to impose communism upon Greece. Newly carved on the hilltops is the ancient taunt of Greeks to the Persians at Thermopylae, come and take us. These words mark places where loyal Greeks stood yet again in defense of liberty. Thus for the Greeks, the Second World War dragged on beyond VE Day, beyond VJ Day, in five further years of bloodshed and destruction, a struggle that ended only with the defeat of the communist forces. When peace returned in 1949, Greece was the only well-armed nation in free Europe. The powerful and victorious army that she pulled back from the northern mountains was fully equipped and battle-hardened. Unlike the other free nations who disarmed in 1945, Greece decided to hold her divisions in reserve and fit to fight. turn the soil that had been fought over and neglected for almost 10 years, Greek farmers went armed into the fields. Five years behind the rest of Europe, these people began the painful task of starting again using whatever tools, materials, and livestock had survived. Life slowly resumed its normal pattern, village life. For in Greece, most people are grouped into farming communities. Yet even with American aid, Government surveys showed that essential reconstruction work would be far beyond the capacity of a nation of only eight million people. And so, out of necessity, was born a national self-help program. If every community would contribute their labor, the available materials, machines, and money could be spread that much further. In villages throughout the land, reconstruction projects were explained and put to the vote the people of Greece literally took the rebuilding of their nation into their own hands. In many provinces, priority went to new roads, roads that increased village incomes by offering bigger markets for fresher produce. Elsewhere, tunnels were driven through mountains to bring water from the high plateau to irrigate the valley farms below. Heavy government equipment was brought in to speed the work. A hundred well-drilling rigs reached down through the rock to bring water to villages that had suffered shortage for centuries. In some valleys, the problem had been too much water, salt water. These marshes were drained to carry a strange new crop, rice, that had never before grown in Greece. The modernization of agriculture 
soon reached a point where machinery could be applied to gather new and plentiful crops. Enough rice to supply home needs and a surplus for export. 50% more wheat than before the war and three times as much cotton. The countryside was productive again, giving more to the Greek farmer than ever in living memory. But in a land that is semi-arid, the farmer welcomes all help that he can get. The government experts that come to the villages find fervent disciples eager to elaborate their gospel. Τα λοιπάσματα αυτά θα πρέπει να τα ρίξετε στο χωράφι σας πριν από τη σπορά του σταριού. Ραδιοφωνικό σταθμός Αθηνών. Δελτίο αγροτικών ειδήσεων. Σας μεταδίδουμε τις τελευταίες ειδήσεις σχετικά με τη σημερινή τιμή του σταριού. A new network of community radios not only gives farmers news of market prices, but brings remote villages closer to the affairs of the country. Never slow to express their views, Greeks cling to a tradition of self-rule that is older here than anywhere in the world. The endless debate continues on the hillside of the Acropolis, the birthplace of democracy. Here, the Greeks established a civilization that devised the very principles of law, government, and ethics on which Western democracy is based. Their philosophy, architecture, and sculpture, as well as in their dramatic verse, the Athenians speak as directly today as they did over 2,000 years ago. Throughout modern Greece, classical tragedies play to the people in amphitheaters where once their ancestors listened. Ancient Athens stands now as a monument, a reminder above the bustling modern city that is the Greek capital, a center of more than a million people the heart of industry and trade, and the seat of government. The parliament building of this fighting nation is fronted by the memorial to the unknown warrior, guarded by the famous Evzones. The return of these Greek Highlanders in their traditional kilts is a mark of peace, for so recently they were in battle dress fighting on the northern mountains. Most of the Greek army holds to modern equipment. Twelve divisions under arms absorb the highest proportion of serving citizens in any NATO nation. thousand years ago, the Greeks were masters of the Mediterranean. Today, a modern naval force guards the narrow waters around Greece that offer over 200 ports and anchorages to the ships of the Atlantic community. Also strengthening NATO in any emergency, are the tankers and cargo carriers of the Royal Hellenic Merchant Navy, third biggest in the world. Home base for these ships is usually Piraeus, port of Athens and gateway for Greek commerce. In this agricultural country, most Greek exports are tobacco, foodstuffs, cotton and fruit, products fetching high world prices. In return, the development program of the Papagos government calls for heavy equipment to develop industrial plants and new power stations.
hydroelectric installations on main rivers are supplemented by thermal stations built over lignite brown coal deposits. Electrical power is the only basis on which Greece can create a new economy with an emphasis on industry indispensable to a modern state. The opening of a new dam is a royal occasion graced by King Paul and Queen Frederica of the Hellenes. Constitutional monarchs returned to the throne by popular plebiscite after the Second World War. There have been many such ceremonies in Greece in recent years, but until new factories can be established using her power sources, much of Greece must remain a farm and mule economy. And the mule will always have his place along the mountain guard posts where Greek defense now rests between secure flanks. In the north, Yugoslav border patrols meet their Greek partners with the informality of allies bound in mutual defense by the Balkan Pact. Eastward across more than 200 miles of Bulgarian frontier stand the Evros River bridges to Turkey, third party to the pact and also joined with Greece in the Atlantic Alliance to help secure the peace of 15 nations. In the villages that were destroyed, new generations are back at school with time again to perform the village dances that are centuries old. Perhaps this nation's greatest show of faith is a decision to timber the northern mountains so long kept bare to deny shelter to invaders. When these trees are ready for felling, the children that planted them will be grown men. For them, Greece has accepted the guarantee of peace offered by the Atlantic Alliance. She needs time and the help of her partners if ultimately she is to make to the Atlantic community a material contribution that can match her proud and sustained effort in the defense of freedom. <laughs>